forgiveness and salvation, the other receives his rightful judgment. And then that is the only two groups of people who exist. Those who recognize and trust Jesus as their Lord and Savior and who has received the forgiveness of their sins and who have that promise that Jesus tells the one thief, today you will be with me in paradise. And the other who received his just punishment for his deeds, he was a criminal. He rejected Jesus. And he died. And will be separated from God for all of eternity. Look with me in Luke chapter 23. Verse 39. Well, we're in 23. Look down to verse 39. One of the criminals who was hanged there was hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourselves and us. You know what he was saying? If, if God is so great, he needs to show me something. If God is who he says he is, he needs to do something. If God is, can do what he says he can do, then he needs to show me some kind of sign. You ever heard that? Have you ever said that? He was that. God, show me something. But faith in Christ is not telling God to show us something because God had already, He told the people, He says, the only sign that you're going to get, you know, He had done signs and miracles and we get towards the end of this, you know, end of His ministry and they said, well, you know, get towards the end of His ministry. It, it, literally, it's on the heels of Jesus feeding the 5,000, right? He had miraculously fed 5,000 and they come to Jesus right after that and they said, you know what? We'll, we'll believe you, but show us a sign. Um, it's like, hello? What, what, what did I just do? What did you just experience? I took a sack lunch and I fed over 20,000 people. If you count women and children, there were just 5,000 men, not counting the, the women and children. They said, well, show us a sign. And Jesus it says, you know, the only sign that you're going to be shown is the sign of Jonah. This is Jonah was in the, the belly of the whale for three days, so will the Son of Man be in the earth three days and then rise again. The only sign was, was his resurrection. If, and if you don't have faith in his death, burial, and resurrection, I'm sorry, there's nothing else that God can do for you. Hebrews chapter 10 tells us, if we receive that, that word of truth, that word of salvation... And we reject it. He says there no longer remains a sacrifice of sin, but a terrifying expectation of judgment. This man looks at Jesus and says, if you're, if you're God, if you are who you say you are, do something. Verse 40. But the other answered, and rebuking him said, Do you not even fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are suffering justly, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. What this man's simple statement was, confession. First of all, he confessed his own sin, right? He says, you know what, we, we're receiving our, our just rewards. He recognized, he says, you know what, I'm getting what I deserve. I, I have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But he also confesses the righteousness of Christ. And he looks at Jesus, he says, but he's innocent. He has done absolutely nothing. And then he surrenders. So how, how do you know that he surrenders? Because he says, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. He recognizes Jesus as a king, not just a king, but the king, the promised king, the Lord, the Messiah. There's a confession there of, of, of Jesus being Messiah and Lord. He, he does exactly what, what we all need to do if we want this same promise given to us. Truly, today you shall be with me in paradise. We, we find it outlined in Romans chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10.
that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. The two thieves represent the two groups of people. Those who confess Jesus as Lord. Trust Him for the forgiveness of their sins. And you're saved. And then there are those who have rejected that. And will receive their just condemnation unless, unless they repent. Repent literally means to, to turn to, to Christ. Literally means to change direction. Your life is going your own way, your own direction, and, and you turn and, and, and you go and you, and you follow Christ. You confess Him as your Lord and your Savior. John chapter 3, verse 18. Jesus says, He who believes in Him is not judged, but he who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There's no more important question that I could ever ask you than which of those two thieves represents your life and your heart right now. Have you trusted in Jesus? Have you believed in the only name by which we must be saved? The name of Christ. Have you confessed Him as your Lord and Savior? Or are you looking at God saying, God, show me something. Prove me something. If you are who you say you are, then do this, or change this, or give me this, or show me this. God says that's not faith. Faith is trusting and believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. But the good news is if we have not done that, God has given us today. God has given us right now. God has given us this moment and this word. Maybe this morning is, it, is, it is your, today is your day of salvation. Today is the time where it's like, okay, Aaron, uh, um, I just got to let go. And I just got to trust God. It's what many of us have already done. It's so tempting to, to trust in ourselves, what we can do. Sometimes letting go and not trusting in ourselves is scary. But yet it is so freeing. Because we know that God is there for us to receive us. Maybe this morning is it's time for you to let go and to trust God. Confess Him as your Lord. Trust Him as your Savior. He will speak those words into your heart today. You don't have to wait. Today, you can know that you are saved for all of eternity. We're going to have a time of invitation. And if you need to, to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you, you, can, you can do it right there. You can do it right now. You don't even have to wait for me to, to stop preaching. It become, can become so urgent. You can do it when we bow our heads and pray or you can come to the front and I will be here to meet you. I'll, I would love to pray with you about that. Maybe today needs to be the day that you give your life to Christ. The invitation is also for those who, uh, of us who have done that. Maybe for us it has been 
our timidness when pressed into service. We always have an excuse. Not, time, not, not a good time. It wasn't a good time for Simon. His family was probably there with him. You know, they probably had plans to go out to eat after lunch, after church, like we all do. It wasn't convenient, but yet he surrendered. It wasn't pretty, it, it was messy. He was going to have to get his hands dirty. But he was obedient. Maybe this morning God is saying, hey, you need to get dirty. You need to get busy. Or maybe we're here this morning and we consider ourselves an outsider when it comes to church. I know church people are weird. Um, we're peculiar. We say things that other people don't regularly say. We kind of, you know, have our own little language and things. When we say we know what it means, but you don't really use it outside of a church context. Um, and maybe you've always felt excluded. But this morning from His Word, God has shown you, hey, I can, I use all different kinds of people from different backgrounds. You don't have to be ashamed of who you are or where you've come from because God says, I can use it. Don't believe me? Trust me. Watch me. Maybe this morning that, that, is, that is on your heart and you just want to come and you just want to pray and say, God, I just want to be used by you in a mighty way. Whatever God is speaking into our hearts this morning, if we feel led and moved to come and pray, I want to invite you to come and to pray. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, when we, when we stand and the, the music begins, I know the hardest thing sometimes at, at a church service is taking what, what God is doing in our heart and, and, and applying it to our feet, but maybe this is the morning when we stand and we begin to hear the music that we're, we're going to put the, the timidness and the fear aside and we're just going to go. We're just going to pray. Lord, I pray that if, if anyone here this morning needs, needs that peace and assurance of knowing that not only has their sin been forgiven, but their, their lives have, have been cleansed. God just doesn't cover our sin. He wipes it clean. Removes it from us as if it never happened. Lord, I pray that if anyone needs to come and to confess you as their Lord and Savior, they would. Lord, I pray that if we need to get over the, the fear of being pressed in the service, or the stereotypes of, of who can serve in church and, and, and who can do what, Lord, I, I pray that we would come this morning. Lord, I pray that you would use this, this time as, as your time. I've spoken the word that you've given me to speak. Now, Lord, may the Holy Spirit move us. And may you bring glory and honor to your name. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.